Hello and welcome back to the FPL Time YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be covering the best transfer targets ahead of game week six. Very tight turnaround from an amazing game week five if you owned Erling Haaland. In the video, we're going to cover players you should be looking to buy, players you should be looking to sell, and at the end, we'll go through some cheeky differentials. If you do enjoy the content that you see on the channel, please like, comment, and subscribe thank you very much for 500 we're on our way to 1000 now so if you do enjoy the content please subscribe to the fpl tom youtube channel but that's enough waffle from me let's dive in to some players you should be looking to buy for game week six and the first player that i'm going to recommend for today's video is raheem sterling now this man's going a little bit under the radar at the moment i think there's a big reason for that i do think it is down to his price point 9.9 .9 million it's very difficult to get him within your side but so far first five game weeks Three goals, one assist, 32 points scored. Very good point scoring from him. Sorry about that. Um, so much so that he has more points than Son, Salah, KDB, Kane, and Luis Diaz. So kind of put that into perspective. A lot of players in that list that we like to own are heavily owned. And he's outperforming all these at a cheaper price as well, which is very, very encouraging to see. I think if you're on Son, this is the easiest switch you've got to make. Amazing, amazing long-term fixtures, pretty much till the World Cup. Chelsea do have a fixture swing in kind of game week nine. So if you've already used your wild card, I definitely think Sterling could be a contender for your sides. Amazing, amazing long-term fixtures. Even if you are on a wild card in game week nine, still really good fixtures coming up. West Ham, Fulham, Liverpool. Anything could happen in that game. Both teams haven't started the season well, so you never know with that one. And then Crystal Palace, Wolves, Aston Villa and Brentford. And the good fixtures keep on coming for Chelsea after that point. So I'm really hot on Sterling at the moment. Someone I'm trying to find a way to get into my team. I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe after the, maybe on my game week nine wildcard, I'm going to have to find a way to restructure my team and get him in because he is scoring very well he's very much a differential it is just that kind of 9.9 .9, 10 million price point for him the only other concern is kind of Chelsea at the moment they haven't looked good have they but I do imagine that they'll go and like spend some ridiculous money tomorrow on deadline day so there's no harm in that is there so I do think Chelsea will get better I do think Sterling will continue to improve as well had the most shots among Chelsea players as well so he's definitely the key threat going forward something we want to be looking for as well is good long-term fixtures and Chelsea definitely have them so that is Raheem Sterling and he is my first buy for today's video and the second buy for today's video is Kieran Trippier. I am actually having to film refilm this because I was filming during the Liverpool game and I was expecting it to finish 1-1 it didn't it finished 2-1 thanks Liverpool for mucking that one up um, but yeah, Kieran Trippier is my next buy. Really, really like the Newcastle fixtures coming up. Crystal Palace, West Ham, Bournemouth and Fulham and then Brentford after as well. Some really, really good fixtures coming up for Kieran Trippier at a nice price point as well, especially when we're going to see a lot more rotation within the likes of Spurs, Manchester City, Arsenal, Liverpool. There's going to be a lot more rotation within kind of their side. So you expect players like Perisic, um, Walker, Diaz, all these types of players that a lot of people own at the moment to kind of get rotated around the team. So I think going for a team who don't have any European football, who have a very, very good starting right back, who's on free kicks, on corners, really, really makes a lot of sense, especially with the solid fixtures coming up as well. It's been an okay start for Newcastle so far this season. Obviously, uh, played some very difficult teams, haven't they? Obviously, Manchester City, where they got a draw, amazing amazing game really really fantastic to watch the Liverpool game as well where they unfortunately lost in the 90 I think it was eighth minute in the end which is absolutely unbelievable um so yeah I really do like Kieran Trippier as an option I think as well with certain injuries to certain players that we'll come on to speak about I think it really makes sense for an easy switch from one of those players to Kieran Trippier as well really high owned as well which is another kind of kick in the teeth especially as I can see Newcastle getting a lot of clean sheets in the upcoming fixtures so I do think it makes sense to put Kieran Trippier or another Newcastle defender within your side for the upcoming game weeks like I said the fixtures Crystal Palace, West Ham, Bournemouth, Fulham and Brentford. Really, really good fixtures if you are on a game week nine wildcard or if you're looking for kind of the next five fixtures if you're not on a game week nine wildcard. Really, really good fixtures. Like Kieran Trippier as well. Has that attacking potential within him as well. But yeah, 
that was my second buy. Let me know, have I convinced you to take a punt on either Sterling or Trippier. But let's move on to some sells. Um, my first sell for today's video is a man who decided that Ellen Road would be a kind of body popping contest um, last night. Uh, <laughs> That's probably not going to go down well with Leeds fans. But yeah, Rodrigo is my first sell, mainly down to the fact that he's probably going to be injured for the weekend. Dislocated his shoulder. Uh, from reports that I read, he has kind of popped it back into place. And they're just kind of waiting on a scan to see how uh, severe the injury is. But I still don't think they will risk him for the Brentford game. So with that, you're only going to get the Nottingham Forest game. And then in game week eight, you've got Manchester United. So if you are on a game week nine wildcard... It's probably worth just taking him out. There are other options kind of emerging at a very similar price point as well. Just check, make sure in Jesse March's press conferences that he's fully, fully out. It's a real shame, to be honest. Four goals, one assist, 38 points. Been absolutely just killing it at the start of the season. A lot of people brought him in this week uh, down to the fact that Leeds had kind of a good three to four week fixture range. And it's, it's FPL, isn't it? The curse. They've just everyone's cursed in bringing him in. But yeah, he's another player with high ownership, so I would be looking to sell him rather quickly as well as his price could absolutely plummet if a lot of people decide to get on off him this week. That was my first sell. Let's move on to the second sell of today's video. Zinchenko is the next sell for my video. Very similar theme to kind of Rodrigo. Injured. Pretty much. That's that's the that's the story. Two games he's missed so far for Arsenal. No word from Mikel Arteta at the moment what his injury is and kind of the severity of it. I know it's a knee injury, but I don't know how long he's going to be out for. And Arsenal's fixtures do kind of take a turn after kind of game week nine. There is a big kind of fixture kind of swing for them. So we don't really want to be holding on to Arsenal assets kind of after that point. In the short term, Aston Villa, Man United, Everton and Brentford. Some really good fixtures there, but after game week line, like I said, I think they play City and Liverpool back to back. So a really, really big fixture swing for them. I imagine a lot of people on the wildcards will be looking to remove these players. But with Zinchenko injured, high ownership again as well. I think the right thing to do is just get off him. Um, big over I'll kind of performance as well with his expected goals and expected assists as well because his one assist did come from a corner where he headed it back across on game week one first game of the season as well and he's not really shown kind of anything else to kind of encourage me to put him into my team I'm not convinced by the Arsenal defense as well either that's two games in a row where they've conceded against kind of poor sides Fulham aren't bad but Aston Villa are a pretty pretty poor side as well so it's not encouraging to see in terms of holding Arsenal kind of um, defenders in the long run. I have put the Aston Villa fixture in there by mistake. Whoops. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm not encouraged by that. Zinchenko looks like he's going to be out as well for the Manchester United game at the weekend. So very, very discouraging signs for him. And I think the easiest move you could do is potentially just move him down to Kieran Trippier as I get an email. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, so the easiest thing to do would just be to move him down to Kieran Trippier. That's the smart decision. Newcastle have really good fixtures up till around the game week nine wild card and a little bit after as well if you've already used your wild card. Similar price as well, so you're not going to lose any value within your team there. They are my two cells. Let me know what you think of them down in the comments below. If you have either of these players, what are your plans to do with them? But let's move on to the final part of today's video, and that is the differentials. And the first differential for today's video is Isaac, 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 who knows at this point, who cares as well, who actually cares, wonderful debut for him, one goal and could have easily got himself another one as well, disallowed in the end by VAR, like we spoke about with Kieran Trippier, amazing, amazing fixtures coming up and I can see kind of a switch to a lot of people moving to kind of the forward options, the free forward options and he represents amazing value at 7 million, he's probably going to start a lot of fixtures as well as it does look like Cal Wilson is out for a couple of game weeks as well, so 
Isaac within a Newcastle side who've got some really, really good fixtures coming up. Crystal Palace, West Ham, Bournemouth and Fulham. Had a really good uh, kind of record within La Liga. Last season wasn't amazing. 32 games, 6 goals, 2 assists. But the season prior to that, 34 games, 17 goals and 2 assists. If he can get himself up to kind of speed with the Premier League and up to them sorts of levels, he is going to be one talented boy. Obviously, at the moment, 1.4% ownership. I imagine after the goal tonight, that will absolutely rock it to the moon. No surprises there. Good fixtures as well, like we said, coming up. Scored on his debut. The only concern I would have is the fact that when he went off, they did kind of chuck some ice at him and wrapped uh, one of his legs around with kind of an ice pack on it. Might just be a little bit of infl inflammation, sorry, or just something along those lines. Nothing to worry about, but just make sure if you are going to bring him in that you do check what Eddie Howe kind of says within his press conference. Make sure that he's fully fit and ready to go. All dandy and all good that uh, he could be. He could be an amazing player. I do like him as a potential differential punt. I do think a lot of people are looking to move away from Tony as well this week, which I think is a mistake. But if you are looking at it, it is maybe an option for you to go for. So yeah, or a little placeholder while we wait for Mitrovic's fix just to kind of turn. But I mean, he's just absolutely destroying it at the moment. But that's enough about him. Let's move on to our second differential of the video. Um, my final player and the final differential for today's video is Che Adams, a forward that is very hit and miss, isn't he? He's a very streaky forward. I think at his price point, he's very good for what he does. Southampton have some really good fixtures coming up. Wolves, Brentford, Aston Villa and Everton. And you know what? Southampton haven't actually been that bad so far this season. Beat Chelsea in the week. Had some other okay-ish results as well so far this season. Obviously beat Leicester as well. They are going to be one of the teams that is within kind of the lower half of the table this year. But it does look like they've got a good fixture run coming up and they're kind of coming into a little bit of form. Like we said, Wolves, Brentford, Aston Villa and Everton. Some amazing, amazing fixtures I think we should be looking to target. I've chosen Che Adams just down to the fact that I think when he is on it and when he is kind of hot and he wants the ball and he wants the goals... He can be a very, very good player. Obviously, so far this season, got himself two goals. That was in the game against Leicester, I do believe, as well. Nice little cheeky brace for him. So if he can replicate that at any point during these fixtures, that would be very, very handy indeed. If you are potentially looking at another Southampton player, I'd probably say James Ward-Prowse is the one to go for. But... The way he kind of plays is mainly off kind of set pieces, free kicks, long shots, and they are very, very hard to predict. Regardless of who they're playing, he could score. Like, look at the first game of the season. Scored a wonderful goal against um, Spurs. And, yeah, like, you wouldn't just... you. You won't be playing him against Spurs. You'd be looking at other people who have better fixtures. That's the kind of problem with James Ward-Prowse and other players of kind of that ilk is the fact that their points returns are so streaky, so inconsistent, that it's so hard to kind of decipher when you should be jumping on them and when you should not. So that is the only reason I've kind of not included him here because he was still under 10% owned, so still a little bit of a differential in some sorts. I would maybe favour James Ward-Prowse over Che Adams, but we've chose Che Adams just down to the fact that I think potentially people could be looking to add a third forward into their sides. Obviously, a lot of the midfielders are kind of not doing their thing, and a lot of the forwards are popping up. Mitrovic, um, you know, Isaac Tanai, Ivan Tony earlier in the season, Jesus, Haaland, Kane, all these players are popping up with goals. It does seem like there is a return to the forward. And Che Adams could be a nice little differential up front, especially with the amazing fixtures coming up. Let me know what you thought of all the players included in today's video. Are you going to take a gamble on any of them that I have suggested? Are you going to sell any of them? If you need any help with all of your fantasy questions, anything that you've got, leave it down in the comments below as I do always answer every single question that is down there below. If you did enjoy the content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Like I said, we're on our way to 1,000 subscribers now, which is honestly unbelievable for me. Thank you very much for watching, and good luck in game week six.